13 on your sidelines protector of the week sponsored by Rand insurance group Kenwa Hill still crushing it just like their football team did tonight and all night we've been talking about those conference titles and playoff appearances and you're not going to get any of that if you don't have a good offensive line our latest 13 on your side protector of the week is the offensive line from Unity Christian High School. Last week, the Crusaders beat Zealand East 56 to 14. They had 400 rushing yards, 84 passing yards, and 30 first downs. That offensive line is made up of Jake Chapman, Sean Vanderswag, Jaden Fless, Austin McElker, Hunter Grassmid, Levi Offringa, and Carter Vanderveen. Tonight, Unity traveled to Pontiac to take on Notre Dame prep. The Crusaders are coming home with a 43 to 28 win and a perfect 9 and 0 regular season. And as we move on, Zeeland East and Hamilton faced off tonight for the first time since 2019. Our Maddie Monroe was at the game, but Maddie, first things first, you spent your Friday night, your birthday doing high school football. Happy birthday, and thanks for still hanging out with us tonight. Thank you, yeah, Jacob, absolutely. A win would make both teams feel better about their playoff chances tonight, especially the Hawkeyes, who came into tonight right above the cut line in Division Four. It was the 22nd meeting between these two neighboring school districts, and the Chicks are ready to rumble coming into this matchup. But the Hawkeyes are putting up a fight. Early in the first quarter, Jaron Bronkhorst rams through the line for the touchdown run, barely crossing over that line, but they make it, and Hamilton is up 7-0 but the Chicks are geared up to even that score. Jack Camphouse nearly gets taken down early in the drive, but manages to get past the defense and runs it all the way to the house. Fantastic run for the Chicks as they narrow the lead to two. The score is 10 to eight. And that is just the beginning for Zeeland East. A great run from Isaac Boonstra and he nearly makes it into the end zone. Getting closer to the end of the line and the Chicks are feeling it. The next drive, a great throw from Will Drank and Kobe Miller is wide open as he brings it in for another Chicks touchdown. Zealand East wins 28-16. And coming into this season, Holland hasn't won a game in over two years. But, but a victory tonight would earn the Dutch their first winning season since 2017. They even have a small shot at the playoffs, depending on things how, go, how things go across the state. First things first, though, Holland would have to beat Godwin Heights. And the Dutch are ready to bring home that win. They finished the first half on top, 24-18. Jacob Torres then gaining some ground early in the third. Amari Powell following it up with the carry, but gets knocked out of bounds after a great run. Holland keeps pushing it further and further down that line, though, looking to put some more points on the board. Then a great throw from Powell, and they make the catch, running it all the way into the end zone, adding the score to the board. The Dutch widen the lead, 31 to 18. But the Wolverines aren't letting them get by without a fight. Great carry from Godwin Heights, and they are bringing it home now, 31 to 24. But the Dutch aren't going to let that one slide. Jacob Torres, again with a fantastic run, gets tackled at the very last second, but manages to make it in for another Holland touchdown. The Dutch take the win, dominating the Wolverines 48-24. to Thanks, Maddie. And no matter what happens for the Dutch tomorrow night, they know they had a fantastic regular season. Wayland and Hastings squared off tonight for the first time since 2015. And we're now going to go back to Matt Gard, who's in the control room with those highlights. Yeah, Jacob, monster game for the Wildcats, who likely needed a win tonight against Hastings to make the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Saxons were hoping to secure home field advantage for next week. First quarter, Hudson Biondo starts us off with an eight-yard touchdown run. Wildcats were up 7-0 early. Saxons would answer immediately on the ensuing drive. Tyler Fraser cuts through the D like a razor. He gets down to the one and Isaiah Wilson would score on the next play. Two-point conversion made it 8-7. Still in the first, Wildcats handoff to Biondo again. Watch him stay on his feet. Impressive, 13 yards down the field. He would score later to make it 15-8, but the Saxons would be hard to stop tonight. They would hand off to Cardale Weinbrenner, and he's coming right into your living room on this run. Scary moment for me. Hastings was up 22-15 in the second when Mason Tosseva tosses it to Jet Barnum, who jets to the end zone. The Saxons finished the regular season 8-1 after a 47-38 win over Wayland. Moving to Granville, where Caledonia needed a win against the Bulldogs to have any shot at the playoffs. The Scots were down 31-7 in the third. They went for the fake punt. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Granville makes the stop. Ensuing drive. Ethan Newville finds Eason Sedinsky. 
He gets it down to inside the 10 yard line, but just when it looks like Granville's gonna pad that lead, we're gonna get a big guy interception. Five foot 11, 260 pound Nelson Grady comes down with that pass. It didn't really lead to anything, but I felt like Nelson deserved a shout out. To the fourth, dogs give to Eason Sadinsky again. He's gonna find himself all alone, 32 yards, touchdown. Two point conversion made it 39 to seven, Granville. How about some special teams? Jake Karanen puts a bow on things with a 40, 40 yard field goal. Granville is five and four on the year after a 49 to 20 win over Caledonia, Jacob. Big way for Granville to end their regular season. And one team's looking for a perfect season, the other for a playoff berth. Still to come, we're gonna take you to Forest Hills Northern where the Huskies hosted undefeated Northview. And it's basically a playoff game before the playoffs. Old rivals from Montague and Ravana face off in a win or go home situation. We'll be right back.